Hi, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here. Today's video is a species profile and care guide for Porcelio werneri. This isopod is found in Greece and possibly nearby areas. Its geographical origins and its unusual body shape have given it the common name of Greek shield isopod. I think that the only other isopod in the hobby that rivals this species for most dorsally flattened isopod is Porcelio spatulatus. Porcelia werneri clings quite tenaciously to surfaces, which may be an adaptation that helps protect it from predators, from desiccation, or perhaps both. You can see that the pattern on the young individuals is quite different from that of the adults. The approximate size range listed on many websites for this species is between two centimeters and two and a half centimeters. Most of mine are smaller than that, but higher population density often leads to smaller average sizes for mini isopods. I don't have any specific locality information on the stock that I have, but there is a morph available called silverback, in which the middle of the dorsum has a light patch. In my culture, many younger individuals look a little like silverbacks, but they lose this lighter patch as they mature. I believe this color change is normal for wild types. The species cannot conglobate or roll up into a ball. Sometimes beginners get confused because there's another isopod species in the hobby with the, with the same species name but a different genus name, Armadillidium werneri. But once you see them in comparison, it's easy to tell the difference. Let's talk about care for Porcelio werneri. They don't seem to be very heavy substrate feeders, but it doesn't hurt to provide them with a nutritious base substrate, which may be more important for the younger specimens. A layer of decaying leaf litter is a good idea, as with most isopods in the hobby. As you can see, I provide mine with plentiful cross ventilation. As far as a moisture gradient is concerned, they always have a moist area, but much of the substrate is kept dry. I keep them at room temperature, which for me varies between 65 to 85 Fahrenheit in the winter to about 75 to 80 Fahrenheit in the summer. This is one of a number of species that seem to like concave hides, so I provide both concave cork bark and pieces of egg crate, both of which are thoroughly utilized. At least one of the bark hides should straddle the moist area. The egg crates, on the other hand, should stay on the drier end of the enclosure, as they will fall apart if they stay moist for an extended period of time. These isopods seem to like most common isopod foods, but fish food pellets seem to be a bit of a favorite, and as with many of the larger Mediterranean Porcelio species, they appear to be fans of cuttlebone or other calcium sources. Unique care requirements for this species, well, basically the balance between ventilation, moisture gradient, and hide seem to be the most challenging aspect of care for this species. My advice is to provide them with lots of options to self-regulate and observe where they tend to hang out. I received this culture about 15 months ago with a good number of individuals of varying ages in it. So uh, I've noticed that the reproduction of the species seems to be steady, but not extremely fast. I haven't really been able to get a handle on brood size, but I always seem to find a few juveniles of various sizes in the bin. I don't think reproduction is seasonal, at least not in my culture. The main thing I have noticed about the juveniles is how different they look from the adults, not only in coloration, but in their body proportions. When they're born, they have a more typical isopod shape, and as they grow, they gradually become wider and flatter. I have never tried this isopod species as a member of a cleanup crew, and I'm not sure that I would. If I were to try it, I would put them in an enclosure with Good ventilation, strong moisture gradient, plenty of concave hides again, uh, with a reptile that would not be likely to regard Porcelio werneri as a tasty snack. If you have tried this species as a cleanup crew, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. The main reason to keep this species is definitely for its unique appearance. Both the beautiful contrasting colors of the skirt uh, with the rest of the body and the dorsally flattened body shape. I would say this species is somewhat shy and most specimens typically hide in their concave hide areas during the day but I do see a few of them out and about on top of the hides most times that I open the bin. When I flip the cork bark 
These isopods do tend to try to make their way to the other side of the bark, but they do so in kind of a relaxed fashion, not running for their lives like red tigers do, for example. Their feeding response is also fairly relaxed. If I drop food in, they're not likely to swarm it quickly like dairy cows would, but if I come back and check on them in an hour or so, I'll often find a number of individuals munching. I've been keeping my Porcelia wernerii in a shoebox bin, and I wonder what would happen if I kept them in a transparent display container. As I've mentioned in other videos, many isopod species will acclimate to transparent display containers and remain quite visible during the day. This is especially true of isopods in higher population densities. If you've kept this species in such a container, please let me know how that went. So, to summarize, I'd say that the pros of Porcelio werneri are its absolutely stunning, contrasting skirt, its pattern, a decent size, and its unusual flat body. The cons of this species are that they are a little more demanding regarding that balance between hides, ventilation, and moisture gradient than the easiest isopods in the hobby, and they're also kind of on the expensive side. All in all, I have really enjoyed keeping Porcelia werneri, and if you've had success with some of the other large Mediterranean Porcelia species, you should definitely give the Greek Shield isopod a try. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.